Well, um, just wanted to do the little video just to kind of speak to amazing, precious people I keep meeting that tell me when, when I ask, you know, when we have a conversation about what we believe and things like this. Uh, they will tell me many times, I believe in the universe or I believe in nature or mother nature, they will say. And so I wanted to make this video for you, just to give you a piece of the puzzle to put it all together and just to hope that you're open-minded um, and you won't close your mind to listening to uh, what I'll say. And then, you know, ponder it, take it or leave it, but just uh, just give you something, maybe uh, an angle you didn't see or maybe dismissed. Um, saying that I believe in Mother Nature or, or Nature or the Universe is... Uh, even though this is not the best example, but you'll get what I mean. It's like, um, you know, your mother keeps making you, cooking you beautiful food, creating beautiful food for you, beautiful, uh, you know, tasty um, dinners and lunches and all that kind of stuff. And you start uh, looking at the things she's created for you, the food she made for you. And you start talking to the food. You start appreciating the food and loving the food instead of the one who made the food. And, uh, you know, telling, uh, I love you, you're so amazing, and, and speaking to it, and, and wanting the fruit to help you in life. Um, this is what it's like when we say, I believe in nature, that nature is God, in one sense, um, because of what it yields, and the, you know, sustenance and foods, and things like this, um, or the universe is, is God for you, or it's your, it, it's your belief. Um, it's the same way, I'm say another kind of example, that you really admire this artistic piece, like it could be a statue, it could be um, a painting, uh, it's just beautiful, it's amazing, uh, and you start again talking to the painting, you start um, telling the painting how much you appreciate it, and you ask it to help you in life and guide you in life, um, but you deny and reject to, uh, or even not think to look towards uh, the painter, which is the one who, it's be this beauty that he created is coming out of him, and that's what you see in the painting, just a, an aspect, a little piece of how beautiful the painter is, or how amazing the mother is that's actually cooking the food. And it's the same way with God. We keep, I keep hearing this thing about, you know, uh, again, precious people that say, I believe in nature, or I believe in the universe, I don't believe in God. Um, it's exactly the same way, saying, I, I believe in the food, I love the food, I, the food takes care of me, I believe in the universe, uh, the painting, the statue, that takes care of me, but I don't believe in the painter, I don't believe in the artist, I don't believe in uh, the chef or the cook that cooked me the food. It doesn't make sense. And the reality is, is God wants you to believe in Him. God wants you to know Him. He, I, I want you to uh, believe in the one who created the universe. I want you to believe in the one who created nature. He is beautiful. He, you, you love the things He made because He is so loving. He is so lovable. He is so beautiful. You're one of His creations. You're one of His art pieces. And he loves you so much and He wants you to have a relationship with Him. And He wants you to know His name. Uh, and it's because it's, it's a closer, intimate relationship when you know someone's name instead of calling someone sir or it or universe or nature. When you know his name, then it goes to another level, the relationship. And that's what uh, God wants you to know. He wants you to know his name. He wants you to know the one who created this universe that you love and this nature that you love. And his name is Jesus. Now, please don't shut off. Don't close your mind to what I'm about to say. Many times we do, and some, many times we don't want to hear this section of things when we say Jesus because we think of the religious institution. We think of uh, stories we've heard from priests, uh, about priests, about pastors, about churches that have done the wrong thing, about countries that have gone to war saying they are Christians and it was in Jesus' name that they did the war. Um, but that's not God's fault. What people have done in God's name, what people have done in Jesus' name, what churches have done, what pastors have done, priests have done, is not God's fault. You read the Bible to find out. You read what Jesus says. Love your enemy. Pray for those who despitefully use you and persecute you. Forgive people. It's a message of love. That's why we call Christ ones. We follow Christ, His ways. And some people, maybe they even reject God because of true stories that are also in the Bible, or even like the flood. 
It sounds full on. It sounds heavy. Like, why would God flood the whole earth um, and kill all these people? And I will say this to you. From knowing God, from being in a relationship with God, not just believing about Him and not just reading about Him, but really having an intimate relationship with God, getting to know Him daily, speaking to Him, allowing Him to speak into my life, transforming me, using me, and, and giving me life. Um, knowing Him, who is the most merciful, the most patient, who is love Himself, but He is also just, He is also holy. If He is willing and was willing to do the things like that, like the flood, after all the things he's seen, after the things he hears from people, the patience he's had with them, um, waiting for them to change, the things that he sees that they will do because he sees the end from the beginning, because he sees all things, he knows the intentions of our hearts, he knows the motives of why we do things and say things, he knows the things that nobody knows about. If this God who is patient and merciful and good and loving and holy and righteous and just came to the point where he was willing to do a flood and other things that it says in the Bible, I know, for me personally, that as humans, we would have done what he did a long earlier than he did it. We would have wanted to do a lot worse than what he did. This is how I'm getting to know God, who is so merciful, so patient, so good. If he's willing to go that far, wow, he must have seen some things that, like I said, we would have broke a lot quicker than what he did. And that's why, yes, there is some things that I don't understand about God, but I don't uh, judge Him and deny Him and reject Him because I don't understand Him. It's like me uh, seeing an action of what you did, reading about an action of what you did at some time in your life. I don't even know your heart. I don't even know your motive of your heart. I don't know what you've seen or, or heard or whatever. And then I start judging you and condemning you and claiming that your heart is evil, saying you're so bad and so evil for what you did and all that kind of stuff, because you might, might have responded. You might have responded to somebody in a, in a harsh way, no matter what that level was. But when I looked at it, I judge you from the outside, but I don't even know your heart. In the same way, we do this to God. And that's what's going on. Many people have rejected God because of looking from the outside or reading the story, but not knowing Him. And when you get to know Him, you think, man... If he's willing to do that, whoever sees their heart and the deep secret thoughts and the, sees the future of what each person can possibly do, and then, man, if he was willing to do it, thank you, God, because I wonder what these guys would have done as they, you know, went about their life. So this is what I wanted to say to some of the things that some people bring up about God. And like I said before, he wants you to know him. He wants you to know his name, and his name is Jesus. And Jesus wants you to know Him. He wants you to have a relationship with Him, not just His stuff, not just His creation. In the Bible, it says that Jesus created all things. Everything was created by Him and for Him. And He came to His own, and His own didn't recognize Him. So notice that He left heaven and came to be born on earth through a human named Mary. And He was born here to show us the way, the truth, and show us how to have true life, eternal true spiritual life and the life we're meant to have here on this earth because we went our own way we went our, uh, we denied his ways we got distracted we turned to other things we turned to other gods we turned to other false beliefs wrong beliefs so he came to show us the way he came to wash the dirt that came on us spiritually as well away he came to give us new life because we all got distorted because of sin our image our likeness which is the image and likeness of god so he wanted to restore us. It's just like um, a group of ants being there and you as a human is trying to tell them, hey, don't go that way, man. Stop building right here as well where you're building um, and doing all that stuff with your families and everything because they're going to throw water down on the ground in about two days and they're going to put cement and foundation because they're going to build here. Please go, go. Stop do going the way you're going. You keep trying to tell them, but they're not listening. Why? Because they're ants and you're a human. So what happened was, if I was able to become an ant and go to the ants and talk to them, there may be, some will listen, some will think I'm crazy, some will think I'm a conspiracy theorist, some will think I'm just a, a fairy tale believer, and some will actually believe me. And in the same way, that's what Jesus did. He left heaven, came to be born on earth as a human. The Son of God left heaven, came to be born on earth as a human, so He can speak to humans, so He can become like one of us so he can show us the way the truth he can point to himself to go hey follow me 
follow me. This is the right way. And so this is what he's saying to you right now. This is what he's saying to you today. Follow Jesus. He is the one that you love his art pieces. Or when you look around the beautiful earth, the colors, the birds, the tastes, you know, the smells, even the fragrances in the trees and the flowers. It's just beautiful. This is this creator. You know, this is this artist. This is the one who made all this and he made you. And you're one of his amazing, his most precious art pieces, us people. So I would encourage you, please, I hope you'll be open-minded and re-look at some things and re-look at why are you denying him? Why did you not accept God? Why didn't you not accept Jesus and you went towards universe and nature? Is it because of some of the things I brought up? And if it is, it's not his fault. People might have done things because they got tempted using his name. People might have done things because they were evil, but still saying they are Christians. Churches might have done things. Wars might have happened while they claim they're Christians or for God or because of God. But that is not God's fault. That is not Jesus' fault. So I hope that this helped and I hope that you would come to him. Thank you guys.